my name is Tanner and this is Claridge Leather. Welcome back to the shop. In this video we're going to be talking about tote bag design. Tote bags are one of the most fun things to make but I definitely know the feeling of being intimidated by not knowing even where to start when you want to make your own. So by the end of this video I feel confident that you will have everything that you need to be able to design your own tote bag from start to finish. Thanks for joining me. I really hope you enjoy this video. So the first thing we need to do when we're designing our bag is just simply decide how big we want it. Um, and maybe you don't have any idea how big you want it. What I would recommend doing is looking around your house and finding any old bag. This is just an Ikea shopping bag. Um, find, a, find a bag that suits your needs in, in terms of the size. Maybe it fits the library books you want to fit in there, your laptop, a bunch of diapers, things like that. At this point you can decide roughly how big you want your bag to be. So for this video, I'll just go ahead and use this IKEA bag. I'm going to show you which dimensions we need to measure so that you can incorporate those into our design. So I think a big uh, ruler or a straight edge or a square like this is really handy. So basically, the three dimensions we want are the height of the bag, the width of the bag, and also the depth of the bag or the thickness. So I'm going to measure those three things and we'll write them up on the board and those are going to be pretty key for the rest of what we're going to do here. So I measured this bag at 14 and a half inches high, 15 inches wide, and 3 inches deep. So this is actually kind of what a finished pattern will look like. And one thing we need to remember is that when we sew it up, there are, are going to be some seams where the leather is sewn together. Um, and those seams, there will be a little bit of excess kind of overlap, and that's going to be called our seam allowance. That's kind of wasted leather beyond the edge of the actual size of the bag. So um, in this example, let's use a quarter of an inch for our seam allowance. You may want to use a little bit more than that, like up to three-eighths of an inch, even half of an inch, depending on your application. But let's do a quarter of an inch here just to keep things kind of simple. The next thing we want to do is to draw a rectangle uh, to scale would be good, to draw it to scale maybe on a piece of poster board that you get at the hobby store or something like that. You could use cardboard or butcher paper, um, whatever you have around, but poster board seems to work well. So you want to draw a rectangle that is the width and the depth of the bottom of the bag. So in this case, it's going to be 15 inches wide by 3 inches. This is not to scale, obviously. Um, one thing we want to do, though, Factoring in, factoring in our seam allowance is to make this 15 inches wide plus a quarter of an inch on each side. So it's going to be actually 15 and a half inches after we add a quarter of an inch to each side. The next thing we need to do is to determine how long these wings need to be. These wings are actually going to fold together and this will join to this in a seam that runs vertically along the side of the bag, just like this. So this is kind of the, the area of the bag that we're talking about right now. So these wings will come out like this and then continue on up and on down to become the rest of the body of the bag. But the length of these wings is going to be this divided by two because this is going to swing in like a barn door on both sides. They're going to meet in the middle but we can't forget about that seam allowance. The seam allowance is going to eat up a quarter of an inch on this one and on this one. So the length here needs to be one and a half inches plus a quarter of an inch. So each of these wings is going to be 1.75 inches, one and three quarters inch. And to those of you who are in the metric system, I'm sorry, this is in inches. I'm gonna have to do some conversion, but I hope you get the idea. Well, I've redrawn this just to give myself a little bit more room and I've drawn our barn doors on the other side here. Now all that's left to do is to draw the height of the bag, which, is, which will be the main body of the bag on the top side and the bottom side here. So we decided that this bag is going to be 14 and a half inches tall. So we just draw 14 and a half inches up and down and across. You do that to scale, of course, on your poster board if you wanted to. Um, one thing I often like to do though, instead of leaving it just at, at 14 inches or 14 and a half inches, which would be a raw edge. I like to do a rolled edge on top of the bag. And a rolled edge is just where you take the, the leather and you roll it over and then stitch across the top like this one. And that leaves a nice um, finished edge instead of that raw leather. So if you want to do that, this would be the time where you'd add that amount of material. 
So however much material you would anticipate needing to roll over, whether that's an inch or inch and a half, you could add that to the top. So instead of 14 and a half inches here, I'll add an inch and make 15 and a half inches. So your pattern is essentially done at this point. You can erase some lines if you want to. We can erase the lines in the middle of our box. So the overall dimensions, the overall width here will be 15 and a half inches plus one and three quarters on each side. So I think that's 19 inches total. Three inches here in the bottom of this notch. And the importance of this notch is just to make the, uh, the sewing of that gusset a little bit easier. There are other ways to achieve this. Some people just like to leave this completely uh, rectangular and then cut out that notch later, uh, partway during the, the fabrication process. I like to cut, cut out the notch. Um, that just helps establish the dimensions of the bag prior to getting to that point. So different ways to do that, but this is how I like to do it. The next thing we get to do is decide where we want to put our handles on the bag. Just to give you a rough idea of where I like to start, these are about seven to eight inches apart. And the drop, which is the distance from a person's shoulder, where this is gonna be hanging, down to the top of the bag, I usually start at about 13 or 14 inches. And what that translates to is about a three foot long strap. So 36 inches or so is, is about how long you may need, um, as long as you're going to be attaching them somewhere near the top of the bag here. Now that you have a good idea where your holes need to go, if indeed you're going to rivet these on, you can just mark those out on your pattern. Seven inches apart or so is what we decided for these anyway. So that's basically it. This is everything you need to get started. I'll be making another video soon where we actually build this thing from start to finish. So hopefully that will be helpful as well. But this at least gives you a place to start. And real quick, I'll show you two ways where you could save leather or at least make better use of your hide. This ends up being a pretty large chunk of leather if you're going to make it out of one big piece. Um, you can divide that up into a couple pieces just so that you have more options on your hide. You can take it into sections, for example. You've probably seen a bag where the, maybe the bottom of the bag is a little bit different color or at least it's a separate piece. Um, so th this piece can be made of one leather and then the whole bottom here could be made of a different leather and that allows you to use three pieces. It'd be joined here with a seam and that's just one way to do it. Another way would be just to do it in two halves where you join them straight along the bottom here. And so that's those are just ways you can make better use of your leather since these are such large chunks of leather. If that makes sense to you, and if you're gonna give that a try, this is going to be a perfectly good pattern. The thing to remember though, is that along this seam, you're going to lose a little bit of leather. So if you decide to cut your pattern here to separate it into pieces, just be sure to add enough there so that the overall dimension is, is still good at the end. So if you need to add three quarters of an inch or so of, of overlap leather to be sewn into that seam, that'll still get you at the, the final dimension that you were hoping for in the beginning. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it gave you what you needed to get over the hump and tackle that next project. If I missed anything or if you have any more questions, please be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. Please subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this, but until next time, be well. We'll talk to you soon.